Hey guys, it's C.S. Joseph with csjoseph.life doing another lecture, another episode of season 11, episode 2. So season 11, episode 2, we're going to be talking about how do ESTPs compare to ENTPs because like people are confused with, oh hey, I'm TI parent, I know I'm TI parent, but I just don't know if I am an ESTP or if I am an ENTP. I have no idea. So based on that, we're going to be talking about that today. But first, let me remind you that we have a giveaway going on right now with the channel. And uh, so that giveaway is a free copy of King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, written by the famous depth psychologists Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette. So if you want to get your hands on that book, which it's pretty dope, and uh, I recommend it. Awesome depth psychology, awesome archetypes. If you want a copy of that, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and leave a comment on this lecture. So there you have it. Also subscribe to the podcast while you're at it. But anyway, that is the giveaway that we're doing right now, this round of the giveaway. And uh, the giveaways are going to continue to keep going as uh, we continue to uh, provide and uh, produce these lectures for you. Trying out some new lighting tonight, actually. Got a nice little lighting thingy majig, and it's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, Seems a little bit difficult here and there, but we're trying to get it figured out. I'd put it like behind the camera, except then you just see this giant glowing voodoo ring here on the uh, whiteboard, and that's probably not gonna do it because this whiteboard, contrary to popular belief, is actually very shiny. So it is what it is, and we'll just kind of get over ourselves as we do it. So anyway, ESTP versus ENTP. Uh, so yeah, we have a lot of type comparison uh, lectures to do. So I'm gonna be doing a couple of type comparison lectures uh, a lot coming up here uh, pretty soon. And uh, th that's great because we need to make sure that we get that content rolled out before we move on to other things. And also don't forget, I'm going to be talking about the quadras very soon as kind of an addendum uh, lecture series with season 15 that we just finished. So that'll probably be se season 16 or 17. And then we're going to be talking about the attitudes of the cognitive functions after that, which is an addendum to season one, basically. So a lot of new content coming, and uh, we're probably going to be diving into uh, romantic compatibility after that. So keep uh, tuning in with us, and uh, it's going to be fantastic. So anyway, on to the comparison. So we have ESTPs, we have ENTPs. What's the difference? What's the same, right? So. ESTPs are artisans, right? So they live in the moment. They're they're uh, they're freedom-based creators. They're they're all about what's happening right now. They're they're concrete. They use concrete language. They're really focused on the what is. Whereas ENTPs are the what if because they're abstract. ENTPs are NTs, also known as intellectuals, for their temperament. The intellectual temperament is abstract. It's pragmatic, similar to the pragmatic artisans, but instead of being abstract, they're concrete. Abstract means we, uh, ENTPs talk in abstract language. They're talk, constantly talking about the what if, always about the what if, or what may be, or what's possible, etc. Whereas ESTPs don't really care about what's possible, they care about what is, because what is is more real to them than the what if, whereas what if is more real to the ENTP than the what is, essentially. So that's a huge difference right there. If you don't know if you are an ESTP or an ENTP, just hey, you might want to figure out if you're abstract or concrete. If you don't know the difference between abstract or concrete, I recommend you watch the playlist season 15 here on this YouTube channel and then, or listen to it on the podcast, but season 15 has all that information so you can get educated. And oh, by the way, tangent, uh, I'm actually been doing episode nine. It's a bonus episode for season 15 in the very near future. Thanks to a, uh, a Miss Wendy Gossett for uh, sharing some amazing information to me that will help simplify some of the things that we learned about in terms of identifying temperaments uh, as we talked about in season 15. So look forward to that coming as well. Anyway, so uh, ENTPs are very future focused, very future thinking, whereas uh, ESTPs are very like right now, what is versus what if. Uh, ENTPs are very systematic with their approach, whereas ESTPs are not really systematic. They're more they're more motive based, more interest based. They're trying to figure out, hey, what's in it for this guy, or what's in it for that guy there, uh, or what's happening, what are we doing, why are we doing it? It's the why behind things. Whereas the systematic approach is trying to create a framework to explain why things work, and that's how ENTPs are. ESTPs are a little bit different. Now, for their interaction style, uh, we have. Uh, 
you know, something a little bit further with their interaction style. Uh, ESTPs are direct initiating control, whereas ENTPs are informative initiating movement. So they're very movement oriented. ESTPs take time doing things. They go at their own pace. Everything's got to be under control or have some semblance of control. ENTPs don't care. ENTPs view chaos as a ladder. And because chaos is a ladder, they're just able to like go, 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 or, you know, create or introduce chaos in order to get movement, in order to get progress. Because if you take away progress from an ENTP, that's like, that literally sucks. I don't recommend it. So anyway, uh, so yeah, ENTP informative also, they're like the, they open the door to uh, find the milk and it's like, hey, we have no milk. Whereas the ESTP is gonna open the door and find no milk. Hey, you should go get some milk. It's being directive versus informing. When you're informative, you give the other party that you're communicating with the opportunity to choose their role in the conversation, to choose whether or not they want to do something that you're talking about. Whereas if you're direct, you're actually already making the decision for the other person what their role is and what your personal role is in the conversation and you're just actually telling hey you're like hey i'm going to go get milk or hey you're going to go get milk right that's just how it is whereas informative is more like there's no milk which means it's optional to figure out whose role in to solve that problem is in that in that uh, juncture so just remember there's a difference between informative and direct and that's why and uh, control is you know going at your own pace, whereas movement is moving hyperspeed, going speed racer with most things, and uh, and then we have uh, initiating. They're both initiating. They're both extroverted. They love uh, being around people and initiating with other people to get the information that they need in order to make decisions. It's absolutely fantastic being initiating in that regard. Although I do like people that respond to me. I really really appreciate it when people respond to me. If I'm like talking to an ESTP, they don't they're not really responsive. So it's more like they're trying to initiate the other thing with me and it's like, but I already sent you texts, why don't you answer to those? It's almost as if the text messages I sent them has lost energy all of a sudden because they didn't reply to them all at once and that's like really frustrating. So yeah, that's kind of how ESTPs work in that regard. So, so yeah, I think I covered everything. Abstract versus concrete, systematic versus interest, uh, the, their interaction styles, and I think the other the other aspect of the Berenzian model was having like a brain fart right now because guess what? I'm still tired from like being in uh, Ohio last week. Whew, that was rough. It was a rough trip, but learned a lot. Was able to handle a lot of it uh, to make it work. Um, so anyway, it'll come to me and then I'll mention it in this lecture. So let's look at the cognitive functions, shall we? So we have the ego, ESTP ego right here, which means you have an INFJ subconscious, you have an ISTJ shadow, you have the ENFP superego. And remember from virtue and vice, the uh, virtue of the ESTP is chastity and the vice is nymphomania versus the ENTP, their virtue and vice is sincerity versus insincerity, right? Uh, which basically makes ENTPs insanely good liars, if not the best liars of all the types. This sucks because I am an ENTP, and let me tell you, I definitely know how to fib, if you know what I mean. So that can be a problem, And uh, but if you wanna learn more about Virtue and Vice, please watch, uh, there's a particular season, it's a playlist here on the YouTube channel where you can learn about the Virtue and Vice of each of the types, and uh, just kinda see how that works. So if you have questions about that, please refer to that. I'm not really gonna go dig into Virtue and Vice that much in this lecture, so. Oh, it's kind of nice to be able to segment out on certain things, huh? So anyway, SE Hero. So ESTPs are all about physics. They're all about what is happening right now. Physics also represents short-term memory access. It's how the mind is actually, the four sides of the mind, it's how the mind is able to access that aspect of memory. And because they have higher expert sensing, they have higher awareness, higher ability, higher mental capability to be able to access their short-term memory. So this ends up becoming like this giant pool of random access memory in their minds and they're able to like basically remember everything, right? That's short-term. When it gets to long-term, their mind wants to write it to their long-term memory, which is introverted sensing, and that's long-term memory access, and it acts like a hard drive. So this is random access memory. SI is a hard drive for long-term data retention. And this can cause ESTPs to be somewhat forgetful because all new information that they're gathering for right now within their short-term memory access their mind is pushing out the old information and it is only keeping track of the most critical information. One thing I would like to mention uh, with this uh, particular model, and an ESTP that I know contacted me this week and literally told me the following, oh man, no one's going to respect me because if I don't have good memories, 
Like that is such an SI nemesis statement because why? They're worried about their long-term memory. They're worried about the, whether or not they have enough memories, etc. And it's a constant state of worry. It is an issue that they have. It's a problem, right? And uh, let, let, me, let me be straight with you ESTPs out there that think this. You know, if you're an ESTP male and you're like, well, no one's gonna respect me if I don't have good memories. Like, okay, that is a crock of shit. Let me tell you right now that that is absolute bullshit because the reality of the situation is, especially like, you know, for relationships, especially with women, if women see that you're going somewhere, if women see that you have a future, basically, and that you're going to have a future, then they're going to be attracted to you. Then they're going to be willing to actually like engage with you, invest in you, and have your relationship with you. But if you're constantly talking about things that you've done instead of things that you're going to do, you're not going to get anywhere, especially with the opposite sex. I mean, come on. But then again, you're probably not going to get anywhere with anybody. So maybe you shouldn't make it about how much experiences you have all the time, ESTPs. That'd probably be more valuable. Maybe you should stop being insecure about what you want because, you know, guess what? Introverted intuition inferior is the insecurity because the in person's insecurity is always in the fourth function, right? So we have introverted intuition inferior. This is their connection to willpower, what the ESTP wants, and they are afraid of wanting the wrong thing. And it's so frustrating because it's like, well, I don't know if I want to be a construction worker, or I don't know if I want to drive a forklift, or I don't know if I want to take on more clients, or I don't know if I want to get this job. I don't know what I want to do. And then they end up getting an analysis paralysis because the ESTP's got to focus on what everyone else is doing first before they know what they want to do, but they keep looking at what everyone else is doing, and they keep trying out new lovers over and over and over again and having new relationships over and over and over again, right? And then when that happens, they're like, oh yeah, if I sleep with you know 300 women, I might actually know which one I finally want. Yeah, see, that's the problem with ESTPs. They just don't know what they want, and as a result of that, it comes off as being afraid to commit. Okay, that's why their vice is nymphomania, because it's like that fear of commitment, because they're afraid of wanting the wrong thing. That's all it comes down to. ESTPs, if you're afraid of the wrong thing, Stop focusing on trying to generate memories because people will respect you more. That's a lie and that's bullshit. Stop being afraid of what you want. How about instead you just be okay with failure, okay? Because ESTPs, if you are okay with failure, and this is very similar to how ENTPs work, and we'll get to that in a second because, you know, like I am an ENTP. I have personal experience in that area. Who'd have thunk? Anyway, it's for an intuition inferior. It's like, well, I'm very, you know, afraid of what I want to know. Thing. How about you just... If you want it, go ahead and do it. Find out if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, consider it a failure and then move on to the next thing, ESTPs. Why don't you do that? That'd be nice. Well, you have to be okay with failure. That's the point. Well, I don't want this. This might, this relationship might fail or this job might fail or I might not be good at this. I don't care if you might not be good at this. You're probably not good at most things. Most people aren't good at most things, okay? And I get that ESTPs want to be like the alpha male or the alpha woman in some cases. They, they like to be the alpha because that's a hero that can spot weakness in people that easily. And, you know, it bothers us a hero when they see other people weak. So they want to, like, push those people and give those people experiences constantly. Maybe even pester them. Maybe even bully them on the schoolyard and whatnot because they're trying to make that other person stronger. Because for some reason, ESTPs feel it's their responsibility to make those people stronger, right? And give these people reality checks. That comes from SE Hero. You're giving people reality checks. Here's a little dose of reality for you, bro. Smack! You know, and it's like, great. Are they actually developing? Are they actually getting stronger? Or are you just crushing them under the weight of your SE hero? See, some types respond well to that. You know, SI heroes and SI parents, they respond. SI child, SI inferior, no, we don't respond well to that ESTP. So maybe you should pay attention to who your audience is and make sure that they actually can receive those reality checks, those loyalty checks, right? Because, you know, hey, I'm gonna push you away to see if you come back to me because, you know, loyalty check, thanks, Essie Hero, that's that's really nice, you know. But hey, you know, I mean, Essie Hero often accuses me, you know, of like being thin-skinned. And I mean, what am I supposed to do when that happens? I have SI inferior, I'm very sensitive like that. I'm up front with my sensitivities. Oh, but for some reason, sensitivity is the same thing as like, you know, being weak, okay? Thanks, that's really great. You know, no, that's not what it is. 
So get out of your analysis paralysis. Stop paying attention to what everyone else is doing all the time so that you know what you want. How about you just try new things until something works for you and be okay with failure. Failure happens. Failure is normal. Failure gives you wisdom. So why wouldn't you want to fail if you're constantly gaining additional wisdom? You know, like the most important thing in all of existence, wisdom. Because guess what? If you have wisdom, you can use your INFJ subconscious and then you become the sage on the mountain ESTPs and you are able to help other people. You are able to improve other people. You are able to strengthen other people as a result of the wisdom you get. It's not about giving them experiences. It's not about pushing them around and giving them reality checks and, and loyalty checks. That only works for a certain amount of people. But for everyone else, you need to have wisdom as a result of failing. You're going to fail a million times. Watch Owen Cook's video called The Truth About Life, RSD Motivation on YouTube. It's absolutely dope because you're gonna crawl around in the shit of life and you don't even know what you're gonna do. Fail, you need to be okay with failure and through failure you develop wisdom and then you become less afraid and you're able to unlock your INFJ subconscious and utilize wisdom to help others and strengthen others, especially those people that do not respond well to your overbearing SE hero, right? Now, SE hero can be amazing and it can give some really amazing experiences. I know some SE heroes who are awesome at sexual intercourse. I know some people who are really good at photography. I know some racers that are SE heroes. I know some fantastic artists. I love ESTP rockers, if you know what I mean. You know, they're, they're fantastic. So, and also SE Hero gives them the ability to use mechanics very well. I know many lumberjacks who are ESTPs, right? I know many ESTPs who can operate heavy machinery. They just have that mechanical genius inside of them. If they focus on it and they're able to unlock it, they're able to do those things. And it is absolutely fantastic to watch and watch them work and how they have absolute total command of the physical environment around them. Unbelievable. But ENTPs, different. We have extrovert intuition hero. And, you know, by the way, ESTPs are part of SPs and SPs are 30% of the population. Well, conversely, NTs are only 15% of the population or potentially less in some cases, which means ESTPs outnumber ENTPs. So they have this bias about them where it's like, well, I'm more right than you are because I have this thing called common sense, right? Because that's their ISTJ shadow talking when they're referring to common sense. Let me tell you something about common sense. Common sense, ESTPs and ISTJs and, oh wait, if you're an SJ or an SP watching this, common sense is nothing more than common ignorance. Do not forget that tradition is the corpse of wisdom. If you want real wisdom, you need to be willing to fail. And in fact, you should probably spend time seeking failure. When you find something you want, but you're not sure whether or not you should want it, do it anyway and fail at it, right? So that you gain wisdom. That makes you strong. That makes you the absolute best ESTP. The ESTP that I would like to be around, the ESTP that is able to advise me. Do not forget, I am able to do this channel as a result of an ESTP who mentored me with his INFJ subconscious. And this ESTP, I mean, he thinks he's an ISTP even, but that doesn't matter. He was able to teach me a foundation of what the science actually means, right? And it's because he kept on trying and figuring out depth psychology and understanding this. He kept failing over and over and over and over again for many, many, many years. But he developed the wisdom as a result of his failure. And he's able to confer that knowledge upon me and initiate me into this science as a result of using his INFJ subconscious. And that never would have happened unless he was okay with failure. This is very important for ESTPs to understand. Ah, it is also important for ENTPs to understand. And this is why some people, I kind of understand why people get so confused between the two types because both these two types actually have a very similar relationship to failure. And we'll see why here in a second. ENTPs, you have expert intuition, hero, also known as metaphysical awareness. The ENTP is constantly talking about, oh, the what if, right? You know, the great what if. And remember, expert intuition gives the ENTP to see the future. We are able to see unlimited futures, unlimited possibilities, unlimited realities, right? All full circle. Not only that, 
Our minds are literally like time machines. We can move our mind mentally into the future and we can also move our mind into the past, our personal past, not the past of other people. The ESTP would actually be more capable at reaching out the past of other people because of their SE hero. But the more personal experience that an ENTP has, the more they're able to see out into the future and predict the future. That's why expert intuition, metaphysics, gives the ENTP, because it's a hero, the ability to become a master of fate, a pathfinder, where expert intuition is able to guide the fate of other human beings. Because you can literally see the future and the fate of another human being, and you can introduce stimuli, or say things to them, or say things to their friends, which will basically alternate or change their future to an alternate future. And you as the ENTP can give other people alternate futures based on what you do and what you say. What you say, right? It's especially important when using TI parent to do it because it's like a breathing dragon fire. Oh yeah, but we haven't gotten to the TI parent yet, but we are. We're talking about perception functions right now, which is expert intuition. So the more experience you have with introverted sensing, the more you're able to see into the future because of the first law of time, and I quote, all that has happened before will happen again. Time is cyclical, right? So because time is cyclical, you're able to go even further than that. Wow, I am like so on fire tonight. Let's keep it going. Anyway, expert intuition, I'm able to see possible futures, all of them. Now, that's not to say that introvert intuition cannot see possible futures, it can, but just for itself. It's like a sniper rifle and it can see super, super mega long range, super long range, but one path at a time. Oh, this is a good path for me, right? No, because introvert intuition is focusing on the ideal path forward. We see that here, but they're so afraid that they're not getting the ideal path forward for themselves that they end up having analysis paralysis because they're trying to figure out what other people are doing before they know what they want, or they're just afraid, they, they just, they don't make any decision. And this gives ESTPs failure to launch syndrome. It's a constant problem. They're not the only one that has this issue. ESFPs have this problem too, especially ESFP men. They get failure to launch syndrome as a result of being too afraid of wanting the wrong thing because introvert intuition is trying to find the best path forward, the ideal path forward for themselves. What do I want and why, basically? Whereas expert intuition is aware of all paths available to somebody. It's like a shotgun. Expert intuition is a sniper rifle, you know, whereas, uh, or it, introvert intuition is like a sniper rifle, but expert intuition is like a shotgun. It goes everywhere in all directions, but it's got a shorter range. Whereas introvert intuition is a sniper rifle, very direct, very pinpoint, right? Trying to find the ideal path forward. Whereas expert intuition gives me the ability to see all paths forward. And then after seeing all of them, I choose which one's good for me. And then I end up rock hopping between, yes, I'm definitely using Expanse terminology for those of you who watch the Expanse or reading the uh, Expanse books, which I recommend. I'm literally rock hopping between different futures to get where I go. And it just looks like I'm to move forward, right? Whereas the ESTP is just trying to do that, right? There is no easy path like that, right? And I end up flowing like water to get to where I want, right? Because expert intuition as a function is literally water. That's why Bruce Lee was an ENTP. Oh, and so was like Steve Jobs and uh, Benjamin Franklin. Oh, didn't know that, did you? By the way, I recommend you watch uh, John Little's book. I think it's John Little, The Warrior Within, uh, talking about Bruce Lee's uh, uh, philosophy, core interpersonal philosophy. He actually talks about expert intuition and how it's like water in that book. I recommend it if you're definitely an ENTP or an NE user, meaning NE is in your top four functions. NE is supercharged by how much experience a person has, just like SE is supercharged and their mechanical, physical capability is supercharged based on introvert intuition by how much willpower they have. The more willpower an ESTP has, the more mastery they have over the physical environment. The more willpower an ESTP has, the more sexually capable in the bedroom they are, right? See, like, that's literally what that is for, you know, willpower. So maybe they should, like, develop it by failing. We should fail. It's important. Failure gives us wisdom. And it is no different for ENTPs. Here's the problem with ENTPs. Metaphysics and being able to see the future, that's great, but introverted sensing is about their duty, what they should do, right? Here's another aspect of, uh, gosh, I love red pens. Uh, here's another aspect of introverted sensing and fear, and uh, it is self-discipline. Self-discipline is how you master introverted sensing. Very important because self-discipline, 
you have to force yourself to do things. You have to force yourself to be outside of your comfort zone. The problem with the ENTPs is that we're too afraid to do new things, new things that we've never done before, and we get super insecure about doing new things. Thank God for NTJs. Thank God for NFJs because, you know what? Their SE child and SE inferior definitely helps me be like more comfortable when I've done, done doing things I've never done before, and then I'm able to get out of my stupid little comfort zone or in my little rut that I might be stuck in, and then all of a sudden I'm actually executing and getting things done because I'm typically afraid of doing new things. Yes, also I have great long-term memory access and I can remember a lot of stuff all the time and I have an excellent memory, which is dope. It is the dopest, but uh, yeah, and it's especially dope, especially when I'm in relationships with the NJ women and I get to remember stuff for them all the time and I'm like literally their walking totem and how they etch my soul. Ah. I love that. And then all the great things they've ever done for me, I always remember it and then can recite it to them when they're feeling down. And then they're like, oh, I guess I am really that cool. And it's like, yes, actually you are because you did all these amazing things. Or when they screw up and they feel bad and they think I'm going to break up with them, it's like, no, actually I'm not because you have this huge pile of all the good things you've ever done for me. And then there's this one little bad thing you did. So, ugh, you know, okay, yeah, it's pretty obvious. Like I'm not going to break up with them because like NJs are actually pretty dope. I mean, especially with ENTPs or EMPs or NPs in general. So it's kind of like, yeah, maybe they should figure that out. Anyway, failure to launch syndrome similar to ESTPs can be the bane of the ENTP. I know it happened to me because I didn't become a man until I was 27 years old. Wow, and I'm 31. So I guess that means I've only been a man for four years. That sucks. And that's lame. And that's pathetic. Wow. Well, at least I made it, right? Why didn't I make it? I was stuck in a rut. I was stuck in my comfort zone, comfortable playing World of Warcraft, even though I was living in someone's garage with an infant, right? Wow. I was definitely a loser. It's no wonder, like, my wife at the time had no respect for me. I couldn't get sex out of her to save my life. Yeah, well, it's because I didn't deserve it. I wasn't even producing. Couldn't keep a job to save my life always working for a minimum wage or something. I couldn't do it. I was a loser. Not willing to take risks, not willing to get out of my comfort zone, right? Comfort zone is the problem. And I should have gotten out of my comfort zone. But I wasn't willing to take risk. I was too afraid of doing things I've never done before. That insecurity was there. So just like ESTPs, the ENTP has to have self-discipline, although that's not how it is for ESTPs. ESTPs have to focus on wanting to fail, whereas the ENTP needs to recognize that they should fail. It's all about forcing yourself and having self-discipline to force yourself to have new experiences regardless of the risk of failure. Because even failing gives our introverted sensing the long-term experience that it needs to not make those mistakes again, right? I actually did a, a post on my Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, you probably should because I'm gonna be doing giveaways there pretty soon, like especially like free coaching sessions uh, with me. One-on-one uh, -on -one coaching sessions uh, will be given away on my Instagram. And if you haven't like been following me on Instagram, you probably should. Also, there's some really dope posts there. In fact, I'm gonna tell you about one right now. I had a quote about Thomas Edison put on my Instagram today, for example, talking about how Failing a thousand times is just means I found a thousand ways to not do it that way. That's all it is. Failure is important. ETPs need to embrace failure. It's the only way they're able to grow. Okay? It's the same here. The more experience you have, the more you're able to use your expert intuition and see the fates of other people and to guide the fates of other people, to guide the fate of humanity even. Right? I mean, that is exactly what we're doing here on this YouTube channel if you think about it. Right? You're able to see that future. You're able to predict. You literally become Muad'Dib with prescience from like the Dune uh, science fiction by Frank Herbert. That's literally what you can become as an ENTP as a result of having supercharged expert intuition based on the fact that you have more experience. And if you want to see further into the future, you need to force yourself to fail over and over and over and over again so that you can have more and more experience with which to prognosticate and tell the future because expert intuition is literally prescience. Don't forget that. Anyway. And now let's talk about logic and ethics. Oh, by the way, wisdom also is very helpful for the ISFJ. Why? Because the ISFJ becomes the knight, you know, the knight in shining armor, you know, the knight that's 
holding up that shield with that crowd and holding Bale next to him and walking across like this, protecting Bale from the from the admins, if you know what I mean. Gosh, that was such a great meme on our Discord. I love that, guys. That was like the dopest. Keep those memes coming. And there's not enough ones with like forklifts. I mean, come on, more forklifts. We, we need more forklifts. Let me know. So ISFJ is the defender. It is like the knight. As a result of being able to fail over and over, it builds endurance. It builds wisdom. But that endurance allows the ISFJ to have long suffering and be able to endure a lot of hardship to the point where the ENTP can literally withstand anything, any hardship. And the ENTP becomes like water, just like Bruce Lee was able to teach, where you know when you punch the water, the water just goes. You can't destroy the water. You can't even burn the water, it just evaporates the water, but the water will still come back again. Because it is said, it is written, a righteous man may fall, may fail seven times, but he will always rise again. A wicked man, a wicked man is just gonna stumble in his fall and he's gonna stay down. But if you as an ESTP or an ENTP are okay with failure, you will always be able to rise again. As long as you never give up, as long as you're okay with failure and you realize that you are getting the wisdom and the endurance necessary to move forward in your life and you will be successful. It is super important that you understand that. Both types have TI parent and FE child. TI parent is amazing. It is literally dragon fire. It is literally a huge sword with which we cut because we, and it is a double-edged sword because as we cut others, we are cutting ourselves because we are telling the truth. The truth is a double-edged sword, right? Why is it a double-edged sword? It's a double-edged sword because where you're a hypocrite if you cut somebody and then the same judgment that you're judging on them comes back to you because Judge not, or you too will be judged by the same measure with which you judge, right? I mean, like Jesus said that, so I mean, that makes sense, right? He's not telling us that we shouldn't judge. He's telling us if you do judge, by the way, it's gonna come back on you, which is absolutely true. Especially you end up having bitterness in your life because you spend all this time judging people and you realize that you've become exactly the thing that you've judged. Or you misjudge, oh, and then all of a sudden people are misjudging you. Oh, it's a double-edged sword. We have to use TI parent responsibly. We have to use our logic responsibly. That's why it is in the parent slot for both of these types. Because logic is all about if this, then this. It's all about truth and awareness of truth. A TI user is more likely to accept that there is that absolute truth exists, whereas a TEE user is not necessarily willing to accept that because that TE user is more based on belief, not actually what is factually true, right? But ESTPs and ENTPs are super similar in this way. They actually focus on what is factually true or not. Although the ENTP does it from a more personal experience, more anecdotal approach, and uh, you know, which can get very like what ify, and and the what if, and the truth behind the what if, and the truth behind the metaphysics. But the ESTP is more the truth of what is. This is true because it's here. I can see it's in front of my face right here. It is the what is. It is true. What is true? That is what the ESTP is. That's why they do loyalty checks. That's why they do reality checks because it's like, hey, bro, I need to give you a dose of reality so like you're paying attention and not wasting your life making bad decisions, huh? You know what I mean? And that's kind of like where they go in that direction with it. ESTPs can be very forceful. ESTPs exist to obligate other people. Obligate other people to improve. That's like a healthy ESTP instead of trying to obligate someone with their fist, right? Which does happen. Especially like ESTP subconscious, INFJs do that too with their relationships. You just have to be very careful about it. You need to keep it focused on wisdom. Wisdom that's gathered as a result of failure because they could become that sage on the mountain or they could become that knight in shining armor for the ENTPs. ENTPs is the knight in shining armor, but for the ESTPs, it's the sage of the mountain. Both of which are able to cause some huge social change in some way, shape, or form. Defending an ideal for the ENTP or executing the ideal on the ESTP side. But both of them have logical parent. Both of them are aware of the truth. Both of them are capable of debate. Both of them are great at persuasion as a result, but it's all fact-based. And because they both do it, that's why people get confused between the two, right? They also have, they both have Effie Child. And every child is all about making other people feel good. Telling these two types that they're heartless, eh, wrong. That's not actually how it works. Okay, yes, I can understand how you would say that they're heartless because they both have FI Trickster. Because FI Trickster is completely unaware of moral behavior. Do not expect 
an ESTP or an ENTP to be sympathetic to you or to any cause or to anything else. We do not do sympathy. Sympathy comes from introverted feeling. We don't do sympathy. So do not expect your ETP to be sympathetic to anything. It's a waste of time. Empathy, however, F.E. Child is very empathetic. And I am very empathic because I really do understand how people feel and I understand the social rules and social norms, but because I have TI parent, I choose to ignore them because to me, truth is more important than social norms and social values and social rules and social currency, right? Truth is a higher value. That doesn't mean I don't care because usually I'm telling the truth to someone because I care about them because I want them to hear the harsh truth the reality of the situation, right? Just like ESTPs would. I'm using my TI parent, I'm breathing dragon fire and cutting them with my double-edged sword of truth, right? With my tongue, because it's like literally a sword and the, with the tongue comes the power of life and death. You probably might wanna read about that. The point is, I'm telling the truth of this person and they're being burned. It's like I'm burning down the forest so new life can grow. And ESTPs do the same thing with people. And we don't, you know, and we're burning the lies away, basically. That's what TI Parent does. It burns the lies away. Of course, TI does that, you know, in any type that has in the top four slots. But TI Parent is no exception. Effie Child, though, is like, okay, I just burned you down, but I'm going to try to build you up now. I'm going to give you hugs. I'm going to give you balloons of candy. I'm going to get you started on a new path in life so that you could be better off than you were before, right? Or, you know, and, and uh, ESTPs do it so that you can have a good experience. You can have a foundation with which you can start the process of healing yourself and building your life back up as they do with the Sage of the Mountain, also known as the INFJ. But the ENTP does it more like, here, I'm going to burn you down and I'm going to build you up so you can have a better future, so you can have a better path, so you can have a better fate, basically. It's different. That's how we do it, but that's what motivates us. We already talked about introverted sensing nemesis and how the ESTP is worried about their past and is trying and worried that they don't have enough experiences in their life and they don't have enough life experience and uh, that makes them somehow makes them inferior, which is bullshit. That's not how it is. They just need to be okay with failure and they'll get over that worry and, uh, and because they will gain experience through failing because that's what they're really worried about. SI nemesis is literally what it's supposed to be used for is a warning to the ESTP that you haven't failed enough. It's not about the lack of life experience. It's about the fact that they haven't failed enough. That is why SI Nemesis is here to provide that worry about their past, that worry about their lack of experience, right? It's there to help guide them to make sure that the SE hero is not stuck in analysis paralysis, that the SE hero is looking in the right places and causing the NI inferior to be willing to fail and be okay with failure and to gain the wisdom it needs to be able to access the subconscious and become a well-rounded and integrated ESTP that's actually successful. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, that'd be nice, you know? But then again, what do ENTPs worry about? Introvert intuition, their willpower. ENTPs are constantly worried about their own fate. And why do they do this? Because they're afraid of their own future. But hey, you know, if they would have self-discipline and constantly, you know, fail over and over, they'd be able to see into the fate better and then influence the fates of those around them and wrap the fates of other people around their fate as well. And as a result of wrapping around the fates of people close to them with their own fate simultaneously, guess what? They don't have to worry about their own future because together we're going to create a better future. Together we're going to create a better fate for all of us, right? And that's how that works, okay? So that way, introverted intuition nemesis does not have to be worried about their own future. If you are worrying about your own future, chances are you are an ENTP. If you are worried about your life experience in your past, chances are you're an ESTP. This is a huge difference between the two, and that's how that works, okay? And then we have TE Critic. Both types of TE Critic. I love TE Critic. And TE Critic could be really hard. TE Critic is like that thing that causes ETPs to point at people and be like, wow, you're kind of stupid, or wow, those statistics are obviously biased, and... I probably shouldn't listen to that. Have you guys like ever heard of like literally, you know, a misleading graph? Oh, misleading graphs and misleading statistics. No, those never exist, guys. I know those Pew Research Center uh, studies are real every single time. They're totally real. They're totally 100% accurate every time. Or all of those tests that pharmaceutical companies do all the time. Oh, peer review. Peer review is never, ever flawed, ever. And there's never bias in peer review. We can definitely trust peer review. That way we can always trust the scientific method. 
yeah, you can trust the scientific method if you're kind of like doing things more by yourself, but the accuracy kind of goes down the toilet the more people you add to it. At least that's the view of ESTPs and ENTPs. We have TE critic. We are very critical towards the thinking of other people. That includes statistics, right? Very critical because we are just aware that everyone in general is biased in some way, shape, or form, and their ideas could be potentially corrupted by those things. Thank God for like ISFJs and INFJs because they have TI child, and TI child is not so easily corrupted. Um, now they can, I mean, at least INFJs can when they, you have that mirroring effect that they have with their virtue and their vice, but, uh, cause they can be corrupted, but if they focus on what's actually true, they can have that insanely high integrity, which is really awesome. That TI child integrity that they're able to have. ISFJs can do that do, too, but they do it from the point of faith, of having this endless faith of being able to endure any hardship in their life and they're able to do. Of course, I'm able to access that ability because I have ISFJ subconscious. It's not as strong as an ISFJ ego, but I can still do it. As I develop myself, as I become more integrated as an ENTP of all four sides of my mind, and I'm able to get more healthier as a result. So that's TE Critic. We already talked about FI Trickster with morals and the lack of morality. I have no clue what is a good or bad thing. I only understand what is true and false. I do not understand what is a good or bad thing. That's why I constantly go up to people with my FE child and be like, hey, how do you feel about that? Or, hey, what do you feel about this? Or, how do you feel about that? I, I do this all the time to my friends. I like surrounding myself with FI users because they're my walking little moral compasses, compassi, compi, compete. I have no idea how to like say the plural on that at all, but whatever, doesn't make doesn't mean anything. I could still be like, oh, hey, by the way, how do you feel about this? And they're gonna tell me their moral judgment as a result. Now, the demon function. The demon function is different both. I have SE demon, right? This is my short-term memory and my, uh, uh, my awareness of physics, right? So I can, can I take a hammer to a nail? No, I can't. Can I like build my own house? No, I can't. ESTP probably could if they wanted to, but sometimes they don't usually want to, but they can. They can work out with, you know, work with their father or work at a company or be a, you know, a construction foreman and they can definitely take a hammer to a nail, but I really can't. It's because I lack that physical awareness. Now, I can do that if I am trained with every possible combination or use of a hammer of nail and every possible task that would go with it. But every time I have a new task that, in, that SI inferior insecurity comes in with this hammer that I have and I got this hammer and it's like I have to completely re relearn how to use the hammer for this every single task. Whereas extroverted sensing hero of the ESTP, they just naturally understand. They pick up the hammer. They naturally know how it works and how to apply it in simple machines and physics and all those things. And they're able to handle it every way, which way they can do it because it's a form of mechanical mastery as a result of having extroverted sensing hero, right? And the extroverted sensing hero, they just naturally understand how things work in the physical environment, but I do not. SE Demon also has a chaotic evil component which is ESFP super ego. ESFP super ego is basically kind of like the Joker. He, Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker, it is chaotic evil. Whereas the trope of the, uh, um, so we have chaotic evil. The trope of the ego, the anti ego is actually chaotic neutral, you know, because one day I'm gonna save your life, the next day I'm gonna steal your car. That's just how ENTPs work, sue me. You know, whereas the ESTP, you know, they're more, you know, they're, 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 not, they're not really focused on, uh, you know, they can be a little chaotic, but it's more like chaotic good per se. Uh, but I mean, I don't really know that much because I haven't studied ESTP tropes that much, but I kind of know mine and I know like some others like TE parents, ISTJs and INTJs are lawful evil, for example. So we'll be talking about tropes in a later uh, series. I'll have to research a little bit more about ESTPs to know the specific ones they have, but I know most of mine, so I just figured I'd share it anyway. But yeah, SE Demon is all about, um, it wants to destroy the physical environment, it wants to destroy the world, it wants to light things on fire and dance over the burning corpses. That's how it is in its most evil form because from its point of view, if reality is that screwed up, then burn it down so that new life can come up. And actually I had to use my superego because the superego, especially the ESFP superego, the superego is all about why do you have a superego and why is it useful? Because 
The superego exists and it's the source of the human condition. It's the source of sin nature according to various uh, spiritual um, uh, belief systems. If, if, if a spiritual belief system believes in sin nature, sin nature is actually comes from and is rooted in the superego fourth side of the mind, right? And that fourth side of the mind, it, it can be a problem. So why? Well, it corrupts the human soul because the superego is trying to replace the ego and, and Martin Luther that's... Martin Luther said that sin nature is when the self bends in on the self and it's trying to pull down the ego towards the self and flip sides with the ego. And you can see that with people who have like insane uh, personality disorders, etc. But the point is, the superego does have a positive application and does have some positivity to it. And that really is the nuclear option because the demon is so powerful. This is the demonic inverse also known as the superego, it is like the ESFP demon. When it activates, it has an insane amount of power, and literally it's the nuclear option. It's that button you press to basically reset your life after like, you know, a nuke explodes and just completely destroys everything, completely destroys your life and burns it to the ground, but then new life can grow as a result, and it is a reset button for your life, right? And you only wanna do that when you're absolutely, absolutely desperate. But if you're really depraved, if you're more set towards your vice and you activate your superego, then you have bad behaviors like rape and murder and heinous crimes coming as a result. So definitely make sure that when you're using your superego, you be very, very careful about when you reset your life because it could have lasting consequences that will affect you for the rest of your life if you are not careful. Expert intuition demon is different with the ESTP. When everyone's trying to motivate them, when anyone's trying to motivate them, they think that they're being manipulated and they will insta go SE hero rage and be like, go super saiyan over it. And they will like, seriously, you know, there's like a Vegeta Gallic gun in your face, destroying the world. And then like, you have no world left because they will, the NE demon literally exists to destroy your fate, to destroy your future. That's why it exists. And if you do not give the ESTP the freedom to want things, their expert intuition demon will activate and they will become the ENFP superego and they will destroy your fate. They will destroy your reputation. They'll become very vindictive. Uh, they'll end up feeling that it's their duty to do so. That, they, that the ESTP will actually believe it is their duty to destroy your reputation and to destroy your future. Because you did not give them the opportunity to make their own choice. You did not give them freedom of choice. Whereas here, the ENTP, if you did not allow them to protect you, if you did not allow them to do their duty, if you did not allow them to have self-discipline, if you did not allow them to have their routines, if you did not allow them to, have, to be comfortable all the time, if you constantly made the ENTP uncomfortable over and over and over again, you were telling the ENTP that their reality is screwed up, that their reality is not worth living in. So then they will desire to go SE demon and burn it to the ground. And they will destroy your reality too. And not only will they destroy your reality, but they will feel that they would have the absolute willpower to destroy your reputation at the same time. Kind of interesting how both their superegos are interested in destroying the reputations of other people, but that's what they do. So you got to be super careful around ESFP demon as well as uh, ENFP demon because they have different applications as a result. So anyway... That concludes this episode, season 11, episode two. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, enlightening, and insightful, please subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and also on the podcast. Leave a like while you're at it. And also, if you have any questions about ESTPs or ENTPs, leave it in the comment section below and I will definitely answer your questions. Don't forget, we have the King Warrior Magician Lover book giveaway. Make sure you're a subscriber, leave a like, and a comment uh, to be entered in to win. And uh, we'll be doing uh, that giveaway very soon. Soon, uh, probably either the next lecture or the lecture after, I believe. Maybe maybe three out. I'm not sure when it's going to be. I'll have to actually like talk to my staff about that and we'll find out. Also, don't forget, join our Discord server. I have a Q&A session coming this Friday at, uh, I believe it's 6 o'clock Pacific, maybe 6.30 Pacific time. This Friday, Q&A session for 90 minutes with me and uh, the admins of the Discord server where we're going to be going over your questions that you have provided us on the Discord server and answering your questions uh, live on YouTube and also on Discord simultaneously. And uh, also, if you want to join our Bay Area group, we have a meetup uh, this Wednesday. Uh, if you want to be there, sign up uh, for the Bay Area uh, meetup, and the link is in the description below along with like the Discord server link and whatnot. So, awesome. Great to have you guys here. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. I got many more of these to do, so I'll see you guys tonight.